Hey YouTube, hang on while I intro the podcast. Welcome to Heal Me Too at Home with insights, art, and activism to meet the needs of now. I'm Hope Sinkson, the artist, activist, survivor, and founder of the Heal Me Too Festival and podcast. If you're listening on Apple or any podcast, you might want to check out the YouTube channel for the Heal Me Too podcast and festival where you can watch the video of every recent episode. This podcast has always offered insights, art, and activism to change our culture. And today, we're taking a break from our usual format to focus on that third part, activism, what each of us can do to help change the culture and meet the urgent needs of now. As you may have heard me share before, I sometimes take part in direct action activism, and since early 2017, I have led an electoral activist group called Swing Left Target 2020 NYC. Last week, I recorded our full group meeting where I shared our plan to help Democrats win everything in 100 days and then asked each one of us to make our own personal plan of action. If you want to follow along with the slides and see my speaker notes with a few more additional details, you can find them at bit.ly slash 100 day plans. Feel free to share the slides or this recording with anyone you know is miserable with the GOP in power um, who might actually benefit and feel better taking action. One caveat about the recording of this meeting, I didn't know I was going to share it with you here. Um, I have used still images to replace all the footage of my group members to protect their privacy in the comfort of their homes. A hundred days, you know, immediately that sort of says the pressure is on, but there's another way to look at it, which means relief could actually finally be in sight. Um, it's not that long until if we do what we need to do, we will be relieved of this uh, particular administration and the GOP potentially at all levels of government. Um, so this meeting is about forming our plan of action, our plan as a group and your plan as individuals deciding what matters most to you and what you want to be doing for this next 100 days so we can all get some fucking relief. Um, I, well, let's actually take a quick poll um, just as a starting snapshot. Uh, Jason, if you could launch it. What do you most urgently want to help Democrats secure? So the results, 54%, uh, it's actually a tie between the White House and the Senate. Uh, the, the loser is the US House, which is appropriate. We already hold that. And all of the above is a close second to the White House and Senate. We can't really afford not to win any of these houses. And the good news is we have a plan for that. As many of you already know, but some of you may not, the, um, soup, the swing left strategy for 2020 from the beginning has been what they call the super state strategy. They looked at all the swing states, all the presidential swing states, and um, their mission was not just to win the White House, but to win everything. So they looked at which states could give us an additional Senate seat and or allow us to take control of the state house, both the state legislature and the state Senate, so that we would be in control of redrawing the districts after the 2020 census to set the progressive agenda for the next decade. Um, the, the reason that we can't afford to lose any of these houses, obviously, as you probably know, is you know the Senate is gonna decide the Supreme Court, is gonna fill whatever vacancies we may unfortunately see. The um, state houses redistricting is going to decide what representation goes to Congress for the next decade and who is voting in Congress in the House to determine policy. And we have really seen the Republicans gain major advantages by holding state houses because they were more invested in that territory than the Democrats were, we volunteers. Um, and the ways that actually there's a trickle up of policies. So if it's uh, reproductive choice and then the laws that are getting passed in states that are Republican control make their way to the Supreme Court or 
LGBTQ rights getting decided at the state level. We can't allow any of the state houses to stay in GOP control uh, for all of these reasons. So they looked at the map and they determined which ones were flippable on all three of these uh, bases. So you're a super state if you can give us two of the three or better yet all three. And you can see there are a few states that have all three colors. It's yellow for presidential, red for Senate, and blue for redistricting states where we wanna take back the state legislature and the state Senate. So only two of the super states actually lack the blue color for the state legislature focus. Um, and what we're doing right now, all the swing left groups are adopting not just super states, but the specific legislative races, the districts within the super states that we're going to work for so that those state ledge candidates or state Senate candidates win and we do take back those state houses. So um, we're going to talk today about the adoptions that our group has made, but you can always go to swingleft.org and put in a super state zip code in the event finder and see what events are being uh, run for any of the super states you're passionate about. Um, we are working, you know, when, one of the things that's great about this approach is normally we would just be thinking about the presidential race and like all the down ballot races sort of ride the coattails of the presidential race. This approach really flips it on its head. We're focusing in a more granular way on voters who can pull the lever for multiple critical races at once. So I'll talk more about that in a second. Um, swing left, just one more sort of word about swing left, is really, really good at data and really good at participation by volunteers. So in the 2018 midterms, Jason and I helped to coordinate the um, train rides and carpools for people going from New York City to our neighboring New Jersey uh, 7th district and were flabbergasted and, and joyfully astonished at like the, the 2,000 people in the last couple of weeks that joined us to go canvassing in New Jersey. Um, when we work with Swing Left, Swing Left's mandate is to help all of us volunteers show up for the tightest flippable races with the greatest impact. And there are just some proof points here and I will be sharing these slides so you know you can um, read them and digest them more. But uh, a couple examples in the Virginia House of Delegates 19 uh, elections, 76% of the letters that Swing Left volunteers wrote and 88% of the dollars they donated went to races that were decided within 10 points. It was also impressive how many went to races decided within five. The Wisconsin Supreme Court this year, uh, Swing Left volunteers placed 60,000 calls, 64,000 letters. We were the largest outside partner to the Wisconsin Democratic Party. So that kind of precision and that kind of volunteering has made us really like an adjunct to the Democrats. And we work very closely now with the campaigns and that's actually started uh, for our group with the specific candidates that we've adopted. The table is just showing specific races in 18 where our efforts probably could be said to have made the deciding difference in the race. So, you know, we knocked on so many doors and we calculate based on research that such and such percentage of those knocks resulted in votes and that was the vote differential. So as I mentioned, we've got this great kind of multiplying effect that turns the normal logic on its head, where usually we think about coattails. Well, now we're really using the state legislative smaller district to um, trickle up all the way to the presidential level. So in what we call super duper state house races, you have a state legislative race that sits 100% within a, a swingable, flippable, critical state Senate race in a presidential state where you may also be able to pick up a Senate seat and maybe a bonus, you may even be able to pick up an additional House seat. So every phone call or text, every letter we send, every dollar we donate to that state legislator 
district voter, every time we contact that person, we can, you know, quintuple our results. So um, in the old days, you know, I would like dial for Hillary or um, Obama or whoever. And, um, and that already felt pretty fantastic. But now I'm feeling five times as great because when I'm speaking to some of the voters that we are reaching out to, they could actually save us in five different houses. So um, let's sort of take a, a step back and look at the state of play. Because as we're making our adoptions, we were thinking about the map and all the swing left groups, you know, we are, we're sort of divvying up the map. So I'm very happy to report, I didn't know this till I just Googled it, that um, the Cook political report in this month, July, saw even more states moving into the lean Dem category and uh, or from lean red into toss up. So Florida is currently looking like a toss up. Uh, I'm very pleased to say North Carolina, which is one of the states we've adopted, is still a toss up. And I'm excited to say that Pennsylvania, which is our other adopted super state, has shifted from toss up to lean blue. Um, yes, I know, right? Cheering. Um, I'm just going to read you what I found so, um, so, so, so happy from the Cook political report analysis in July. This election is looking more like a democratic tsunami than simply a blue wave. I'm going to start crying. President Trump mired in some of the lowest job approval ratings of his presidency is trailing Biden by significant margins in key battleground states like Pennsylvania, eight points, Michigan, nine points, and Wisconsin, nine points. He's even running behind Biden in his firewall states of Florida and North Carolina. So we know we've seen this movie before at this point in the cycle. Don't get me wrong. We are taking nothing for granted. I'm elated, but super, super, super cautious. Um, my philosophy is the worst thing that could happen if we work our asses off, just like as if this wasn't being reported right now, and as if we assumed this would all go away and we'd be back in a 2016 scenario, the worst thing that would happen is a blue tsunami because we would be working to the point where we will flip all of those state legislature seats and all of those Senate seats and all of those uh, House seat bonuses. So our group, I'll tell you some of the reasoning why in a second, but our group has decided to focus for now in Pennsylvania and North Carolina. We're going to focus on them through the election and we may pick up a third state and we're actually really interested in your thoughts, um, which we'll get to towards the end of this meeting. Pennsylvania, as a New York City based group, Pennsylvania is our closest swing state. So from the beginning, before COVID, this was always our plan. Uh, in fact, we would have been doing a lot of carpooling to Pennsylvania um, in our original plans. So Pennsylvania is one of the big three of 16 that gave Trump the White House. It's also uh, in that polling we just cited, actually the closest uh, of the big three by one point difference. Um, it has been an essential swing state for many cycles. It is gradually turning blue though in 18 and 19. It's, it's getting more and more solidly blue. So um, it was notoriously gerrymandered. The districts got redrawn by, be, excuse me, redrawn due to a state Supreme Court outcome. But if the GOP holds the state house, they will just do it again and see what they can get away with. Of course, that's what we should fully expect from them. In Pennsylvania, we need to flip four Senate seats uh, to take the Senate, and we need nine state House seats to take the House. Swing left um, actually merged with flippable in uh, the recent past, and their data analysis helped them to identify a whole bunch of the most flippable state legislature and state Senate districts. Our group uh, took the, the yellow, you know, districts that they showed us on their map to say these are our swing left targeted districts. And we put the Senate one on top of the state legislator one to see where we could find our super duper districts where we could be talking to somebody who's a voter in both a flippable essential state ledge and state Senate race. We also took a look at what, what is called the pivot counties in Pennsylvania, the ones that went for Obama in 12 and Trump in 16. This um, 
Ballotpedia map is also showing where mixed results were seen. <clears throat> Excuse me. And in fact, it's one of those mixed counties down here in Chester and Delaware that we have decided to focus on. So uh, you can see in the blow up Chester and Delaware. And I'll just show you, oops, sorry, we jumped ahead here that the state legislature district is number 116. It sits 100% inside of that purple state Senate district number nine. So um, it's flashed on your screen just for a second. Our beloved candidate, we love him so much. I'm so excited. He is amazing. He joined us, Anton Andrew, joined us for a happy hour and spent about 40 minutes with us telling us his really moving personal story as an immigrant, uh, as somebody fighting for racial justice. He actually is running in a majority white district, uh, but is incredibly well loved there and is looking very, very strong to win. The incumbent uh, Republican is retiring. Anton actually came within 850 votes of unseating that long-term incumbent in 18. So he's got real momentum. Uh, the GOP only won by about 2% of the vote. And again, it's been trending blue. We actually learned uh, from Anton that Chester is a bellwether district as well in Pennsylvania. And it just went Democrat for the first time in local and courthouse races. It's been traditionally more red for complicated local reasons having to do with local politics. Um, Delaware also recently went for Democrats in local offices uh, as well. So the senator that we're working for, so Anton is the state ledge candidate and his district 160 sits 100% inside of uh, Senate district number nine. And John Kane is a very, very fine candidate. He is a challenger as well. We're trying to flip this seat. Um, and his is actually the number one most flippable Senate seat in Pennsylvania. He has been fighting the Pennsylvania GOP machine, which is what it is at the state level for decades. The incumbent in his district won by only 3%. And um, we're very happy that the two field teams of these two candidates, Anton's people and John's people, collaborate very closely. And um, perhaps not right away, but as we get closer to the election, we do expect that we might be able to do phone banks where we talk about them both. To, so we would call Anton's constituents and talk also about John, um, which is a great you know, two for one. So our other adopted state is North Carolina. And there are a number of reasons for this. One is that it's a toss up state in the South, a notorious voter suppression state. And we're very excited that uh, working in North Carolina means that we can do swing left work directly with candidates and work with an organization we love called Reclaim Our Vote, which is fighting voter suppression. More on that in one second. I should point out before we move on to that slide, that in North Carolina, we only need to flip five state Senate seats to take control and six uh, state house seats. So we looked at uh, a little more about Reclaim Our Vote before I tell you about the map. Reclaim Our Vote is a really inspiring and exciting organization. They have been around for, um, make it, please jump in if you know the specifics, but I know they've been at work for a few cycles um, and more critical. I believe the founder, Andrea Miller, Miller played a critical role in, uh, it was Doug Jones win, right, in Alabama? Yes. And um, so we've been working with Reclaim Our Vote now for a couple months. Baker often is uh, leading a lot of those phone banks. And their initial mandate was to reach out to voters that were purged through voter suppression, you know, voter roll calling and let them know and say, we, we're not sure, but you may want to, you need to re-register. Um, they finished that list and then they moved on to a bunch of other amazing agendas. So we have dialed Georgia with them, we dialed Texas with them for both of those primary um, processes. We are reaching, when we work with Reclaim Our Vote, it's nonpartisan and we are reaching out to voters of color to help give them the information that they need that oftentimes their state is not making available to them. Again, notorious voter suppression states. So assisting them to uh, be empowered with their right to vote and fight voter suppression. 
when we looked at the North Carolina map, uh, but Reclaim Our Vote works at the county level. So we looked at the counties and we discovered that this little blue one, Cumberland County, uh, is chock full of flippable races, which are swing left selected districts. So there's three nested districts. Um, it's, just, it's just an amazing, exciting uh, three for one. So the Senate 19 is the number one most vulnerable Democratic seat. And within that, you've got the House 43, which is a very tight net risk, and House 45, which is the number three most flippable race. What we decided to do, since again, we're, we're staying at the most granular level with our adoptions, we primarily have adopted Kimberly Hardy in North Carolina House District 43. So, and actually next Tuesday, a week from tonight, Kimberly is joining us at our weekly uh, speaker series, Happy Hour, so you can get to know Kimberly. Last week, we were actually joined by the Senator in Cumberland, which I'll tell you, who I'll tell you about in just a second. Kimberly is a strong progressive candidate with a strong chance to win. She ran to the left of the incumbent in the primary and beat him. The district was recently redrawn. Again, New, uh, North Carolina is another state that due to racial gerrymandering, uh, state Supreme Court, I believe it is, throughout the old districts, they had to be re redrawn. So this district technically as a whole, it was previously held by a Democrat, but it's been redrawn and it has different constituencies and it's much more competitive. You can see that she is actually a flip score of D minus two. So um, the good news is there is a large pool of untapped voters in Cumberland County and those people who registered but did not vote in past cycles and it leans Democrat by over 30%. So our strategy and their strategy in North Carolina is aimed at energizing the base. Um, Kimberly can definitely hold this district and Democrats can take control of the state legislature um, with that strategy. Um, I think the only other thing to point out is about Kimberly personally. She is a former uh, social worker at a at school, sorry, a school social worker. And she is dedicated to helping those who struggle and to building safe communities with opportunities to learn, build businesses and thrive. The other state legislative candidate within Cumberland County is Frances Vanell Jackson. Um, her seat has got a flip score of D plus one. She's a little more secure. So we are probably sometimes going to be supporting her if we do phone banks with Reclaim Our Vote that happen to reach her voters. But we won't be focusing on her district, but we are terrifically excited to support her when we are dialing with Reclaim Our Vote. So the state senator uh, in District 19 is Kirk Devier. And Kirk is amazing. We spoke to him last week. Uh, he won thanks to a strong ground game in 18. He unseated a four-term incumbent who was part of the senatorial leadership team, but also known for fraud. Uh, and voter suppression, voter ID laws uh, is something that the person that held the seat previously was you know, in favor of. Now that same person is back to run again against Kirk. So it's the same race, same candidate rematch. Last time it was the most expensive race in North Carolina and they expect it to be again for the Democrats to take the majority. Uh, Kirk's is the most critical race. It's the most challenging. It's the number one targeted seat by the Republicans. Um, Kirk is passionate about voter, uh, not about fighting voter suppression, um, removing voter ID laws. He's passionate about justice and economic reform. Uh, there is a large black population in Cumberland and poverty disproportionately impacts black and brown communities. Um, and that is what he told us, you know, drives his uh, passion in part. It's a lifelong thing for him, but that is one of the reasons he's so passionate about working on these issues. Um, at the end of the day, he wants the government working for families, not corporations. And there's polluting in the district. There's a lot of different, very hot issues um, that we love his, his uh, stances on. 
let's pause on presenting and let's do another poll. So you've just been taking in like a bunch of candidates that we're going to be supporting and we'd love you to join us in supporting. But I'm curious if we switch to thinking about what kind of actions, what kind of um, participation you're most interested to do. So a lot of people are interested in letter writing, although the two different kinds of phone banking also uh, actually, if you thought about phone banking in and of itself, that was actually the top winner. And um, a little interest in fundraising. That is exciting to see. That's often the hardest one to get people involved in. A lot of people interested in text banking and voter registration. Obviously, we are not doing the volume of in-person canvassing, door knocking, or voter registration that we had originally expected to be doing and that are the tried and true techniques for reaching voters and making sure that they participate in an important election. Um, we may be able to do a teeny bit of in-person work, but we'll talk more about that in a second. The reality is phone banking, letter writing, these are our best tools in this era to reach people in a way that feels personal to them and engage with them and encourage them to vote or register to vote. So we're going to be doing phone banking, letter writing, and we've already been fundraising, and we are going to hopefully do a little bit more. Phone banking is really the most important thing, in, in my uh, opinion, that we're doing right now, although letter writing is a very close second. So we are dialing the super duper districts, the ones that I just uh, explained, in North Carolina and Pennsylvania. and. Um, Sorry, just doing a mute all. So when we do the phone banking, we, we do it on Zoom and we do a really easy training with everybody. We get people who know what they're doing active as soon as possible so they don't have to sit through the training. But if you're new to phone banking, it's a really comfortable way to start. So we walk you through everything. We answer every questions. We help you with the technology. And then we all go on mute, but stay on the Zoom call while we're dialing. And you can use the chat or um, even come off mute and ask a question if you need to. Uh, we, we stay in touch throughout the time that we're dialing. And then at the end, we come back together and share about what happened and what it was like. So I know a lot of people who have done it for the first time have said that it was not, you know, as hard or scary as they expected. Or before they went and made their first call, they're like, I've never done this before. And then they come back and they say, oh, and they feel good. So um, I also want to let you know, because I know this is a common concern as well, we're not trying to convert Republicans. We're not calling people and getting into deep canvassing, deep persuasion conversations in these candidate phone banks. There are groups doing that. It's not what we have prioritized um, and not what we're doing as a group. So um, what we're doing is really promoting name recognition, you know, who really knows their state legislative candidates by name. A lot of times I'll reach somebody and they'll be like, well, he, Anton is the one I know now, you know, I, yes, I'm going to vote for Anton. Um, so we're doing name recognition. We're also helping people sign up for vote by mail or early voting, depending on what's available in the state and what point of the calendar we're at. Basically safe voting. And we've got a short issues based script that we, you know, speak from. It's right there for you. It's not complicated or hard. And we're also sometimes asking if, if we get an enthusiastic person, would they be interested in volunteering and doing the same kind of thing that we're doing. So we run these uh, twice or three times a week. We've got a Wednesday night. Actually, we currently run it three times a week and we're going to be doing it four times a week. I, I uh, undersold us. So we're doing Wednesday evenings. We're soon going to do Tuesday evenings. And we do both Saturday and Sunday afternoons, which are really good times to reach people. Um, uh, this is going to be available to you many times, but you might want to jot it down if you, already, if you don't already know it. We have a short link, a bit.ly, for our group page where you can find all of our events whenever we create them. bit.ly slash SLT 20 for swing left target 20. And it's all lowercase. So just to, you know, show you what I'm talking about, um, when we are dialing for a candidate, as I said, you know, we're, we're doing um, 
name recognition and all those good things. So uh, I'm just going to read to you a little bit of it. We leave messages because in this era where we can't go knock on doors, we just don't want to leave any stone unturned. Um, so a short script about supporting Anton Andrew, calling to uh, talk to you about Anton, remember name recognition, and his campaign. I'm really sorry that I missed you, but you can learn more about Anton by visiting AntonAndrew.com, and I hope you'll consider supporting Anton with your vote. If this person was a Democrat, I would also say, and I hope that you will sign up to vote by mail so you can vote safely in November. It's the easiest and the safest way to vote, and then I would give them that website too. So when we're, vote, when we're phone banking with Reclaim Our Vote, we are supporting, I, I didn't, I'm not sure if I mentioned Reclaim Our Vote is affiliated with NAACP in almost all, if not all of the states that they uh, work in. In North Carolina right now, we are supporting a really wonderful campaign with the NC NAACP to build a community of voters. So we're helping people get early voting alerts. We're helping people recruit their friends to vote. We're asking if they'll be a volunteer. And when somebody says that no, they're not going to vote, we're engaging in meaningful conversation. So it's a little light persuasion, but it's really just human to human conversation. Sometimes on these phone banks with Reclaim Our Vote, you do hear stories about how their vote has been suppressed. Um, so sometimes even just making that human contact with that person, it may not even happen during your phone call, but it may actually help a little bit. It may actually restore a little bit of confidence or interest. Um, but in any case, we try. And, and if you can't convince somebody, that's okay. But we just try to probe what issues they care about and let them know a lot of those issues are decided at the local level. And a lot of those local races are decided by very thin margins where a few votes could really make a difference. So the other tactic we're doing a ton of is writing letters with Vote Forward. We are um, actually aiming as an organization, Vote Forward, with a ton of progressive allies, but Swing Left is the lion's share of the volunteers still doing the work. We are trying to uh, stockpile and then mail 10 million letters come October. So these letters are research tested to boost turnout. We write them all year and we hold them and we put them in the mail at the last minute we can because we know that in-person voting is going to be very important this year because of all of the Republican decisions and schemes uh, to suppress vote by mail. So it's going to be really important that people do get out to vote. We're holding these letters until as late as possible, a reasonable date, whatever the mailing timeframes tend to be at that point in the calendar. We put them in the mail, they show up on someone's doorstep right before election day. And uh, as you'll see, they bear a very personal heartfelt message so that it really makes a connection with the voter and then they go vote. So we're writing these letters in Zoom parties again, or you can do it on your own. We're meeting twice a week, Wednesday evenings and either Sunday afternoon or evening, we're alternating um, what time it happens. And we actually now have an angel in New York City. So if you are New York City based and you can't do this because you don't have a printer, we now have a volunteer who's interested in printing and then driving the, the letters to you. So um, you can email us at the group email. There's gonna be a place in a minute for you to also fill it out if you want this. Um, we're very excited. And this also means if you have a group of people in your neighborhood who you could hand letters out to, if you could recruit for us and maybe hold your own letter party, we could get you that quantity of letters that you might need. Um, 10 million is a lot of letters, so we can use all the help we can get. This is a sample letter. Um, as you can see, it's a form pre-printed letter and then you hand write certain parts of it. There's a heartfelt message at the heart of it about I vote in every election because so we have a script that's based on best practices, which is what's showing here. Um, you're free to use that script. We've got a whole training slide deck, um, which you would see at one of our Zoom parties. 
or we can also share the link to that for you to do this from home. Um, I usually put a PS, you'll feel great you did, and you can put a little asterisk next to the place where there's a link for them to look up their voting info. This is going to be pretty critical this year where so much may be changing about polling locations. So the other thing that we've already been doing is fundraising. We started a campaign around Valentine's Day with the hashtag show blue love. We actually did the same kind of campaign in 18 and raised about $4,500. We have now raised $9,063. We had set a goal of 10,000. I am so excited that we're so close. So um, the theme of this campaign, as you can see, is show blue love and also will you give $20 for 2020 Dems? So, um, you know, it's a really low ask. It's really not that painful. We have email templates that you personalize. It's all digital. There's no, um, I mean, you could call people, but really all you need to do is send emails to people or, and or emails work the best, but you also can support that by posting the memes that we've created. We have sample posts that you can use. It's basically all designed to be turnkey. The place that you could go to get started, if you have some people you think could probably afford $20 to save our democracy, is um, bit.ly slash 2020 email one, all lowercase. And that's where you'll find like the email templates, etc. Um, I'm really excited and going to make a push to try to hit that 10,000 by the Democratic Convention. So there's a lot of other activity going on that really is important as well. And as I mentioned, we may be able to do some in-person door knocking in Pennsylvania. I believe that the uh, Pennsylvania Dems are doing some now. It's not posted on their um, listings of events uh, yet because I know it's sort of they're testing the waters. Because we can't really carpool safely, all confined in a car, it's probably going to be limited to people who would drive to 90 minutes to two hours to Pennsylvania to do in-person door knocking or in-person voter registration with family members or other people in their, you know, bubble. Um, another thing that is available to everybody is additional work with Reclaim Our Vote to fight voter suppression in other of the super states and also other states that Reclaim Our Vote is supporting, but they are supporting, I think it is four or five of the super states. So beyond North Carolina, you could be uh, calling and postcarding into Georgia, Florida, Arizona, make a, what am I leaving out? There's, I think there's even another one. Texas. Texas. That's right. So um, another uh, action is text banking. And we probably will start text banking, but we haven't been yet. I think that text banking could be a really, really powerful fit for providing people with links to uh, register to vote or to vote by mail, to request their vote by mail ballot, or to get early voting location information or their polling place once we get to get out the vote. So I'm really going to be looking for, and I already know a couple places that are doing text banking. Um, I think that we'll start to see more and more of it as we get towards fall. But if you spot a great text bank um, going on, I really hope you'll let me know. Um, another thing that we know is going on is voter registration phone banks. And we haven't tried too many of them. One of them that um, one of the core team members in our group tried so far wasn't that effective perhaps. So I'm, I'm not sure how heavily we want to support that, but it's there. And um, as I mentioned before, you can also always find actions in other super states at swingleft.org. I would recommend that you put in the super state zip code, like any zip code from that super state, to see actions that are working to flip that super state. These are some of our allies that uh, we're working with in super states for some of those types of activity. We already talked about Reclaim Our Vote. Field Team 6 is doing both um, voter registration and vote by mail phone banking to Florida and Arizona right now. And I think they'll be adding additional super states uh, soon. They may be doing in-person voter registration in Philadelphia. They have a really great organization for that. Um, Turn PA Blue is, uh, is our in-state partner doing uh, door knocking in Pennsylvania. 
Win Divisible is a new uh, initiative from Indivisible, and they are running text banks. Um, we need to look into what they actually are to know how heavily we want to support them, but I'm very interested to check them out. And Pennsylvania Stands Up is um, doing the voter registration phone banks that we're curious to continue trying. There's one other thing I wanted to just call out. If you live in a super state, because I know we have people joining us from all over the country or in New York, having volunteers at the polls is going to be critical because of the um, difficulty staffing this year. And if we don't have staff, polls will close and it will be much harder for people to vote. So um, I know one volunteer who said that he believes he's had COVID or knows that he's had COVID and feels relatively comfortable doing this. This might be a really great um, way to volunteer, you know, for you as well. I don't know. We'd like to expand, but we need some additional participation. We need some additional support. So um, we need your help to expand into another super state and super duper district. We'd like to be running more phone banks. We're partnering now with the campaigns. We don't always have to do the training ourselves, like run everything ourselves. Sometimes all that's required is to go phone bank, but represent our group and sort of say hi to everybody who signs up from our group, just so there's a feeling of social connectivity, which I think is important, um, especially in these times. Text banking, as I mentioned, we aren't yet really into it. So if that's something you're passionate about, we could really use your help with getting more of that set up and hosting the events, helping to create the training and all of that. Other stuff we need help with, if you're interested, um, there's a certain amount of behind the scenes work just to set up all of our events and then to send the reminders and to text people, you know, the shepherding an event until uh, it happens. There's social media outreach we're doing a lot of, and we could use more volunteers to assist with the posting or the creation of the um, visual assets and the posts. And as I mentioned, we need some more people to host phone banks, whether that's like being experienced as a phone banker and you're ready to actually run a training or just, just being sort of the face of our group is also very helpful. So um, we would welcome you to join our core team and help with events like this one or any of those things. And I also want to mention before we go to the next step that I mentioned that we could help you uh, get hold of a lot of letters if you wanted to run your own letter party. We can also host that party with you or give you access to our Zoom to host it yourself and give, give you our training slides and all of that. Um, I've personally been really offering the idea that I liked of a, a F Trump cocktail hour, whether that's fire Trump or the other one. Um, I know of one volunteer who actually did this for her birthday party was like, okay, guys, the only thing that's going to make me feel good on my birthday is if you all write letters. Um, so those are some creative ways of going about it. And now I think we've gone over a ton of actions, types of actions. We've gone over the candidates that our group is supporting. Now I'd like to hand it over to you to make your own personal plan of action. Then we'll come back together and we'll talk about how we choose a third super state and what things would matter most to you if you were gonna help us choose, you know, something on top of um, Anton Andrews in um, Pennsylvania and um, Kimberly Hardy in North Carolina. So the next thing that we wanted to do is check in about what you know would be most motivating or you know passionate for you in choosing a third super state. These are factors that we're thinking about, and I'm going to ask you to choose which one option matters to you the most. Where we don't have to just limit ourselves to just one, but I'm just curious um, where people's passions really are drawn the most. That's great. Wherever Swing Left says we're needed most is that I, I think that's um, something I'm passionate about as well. And then within that, if we considered these other factors, they're polling pretty comparably. We've already selected a big three state in Pennsylvania. We've selected a voter suppression state in North Carolina with a Senate seat. So it's sort of like if you were adding to the menu of actions that you'd want to participate in on a regular basis, the way you just filled out your survey, um, what, would, what would fit that, what would scratch that itch? What is that itch? Um, 
And we can go ahead and move beyond the whatever sw uh, swing left says and just think if we were choosing it on our own steam, what would you care about most? Hey, everybody, welcome back. Um, I didn't sit in the breakout room uh, for the entire time with the group that I was with. So I'm really excited to hear. It was really exciting to hear what I did. Um, Jason, do you want to go ahead and start with just a real short, because we're at 651 now. Yeah, so our, um, the groom I was in, um, definitely the idea of the two going for one of the two big wins. And then really the energy was a lot on Florida. Uh, a lot of interest in the fact that there's a Latinx population there. So mm -hmm. we could be doing that. Uh, a lot of uh, interest in the fact that's understanding that going to Florida, it would be in a swing left targeted area. So it would be somewhere that swing left said, this is where we need to, to do the love. So, um, some reservations, some question about whether Florida, how viable Florida is, but that seemed to be the, the really interesting conversation was Florida in our group. Okay, cool. Is there another, uh, Mika, would you like to report back? Sure. We had a, a great conversation. Uh, we did have a, uh, Georgia, I guess was kind of popular. Uh, also, uh, we had people saying, you know, happy to do anything. There's lots of work to be done. Um, there was suggestion of uh, focusing also on, on, it's not among those criteria, but it was mentioned, Kentucky and Maine. And uh, there was also a suggestion of focusing on a small state, like, uh, I guess, Iowa, or that was our discussion. Mm -hmm. Cool. Who wants to go next of the uh, group leaders? I'll jump in. Um, I, I'm not sure that our group had a uh, a real uh, was quite ready to make a decision like what state should we focus on it was much more on we really need to work hard to make sure that Trump and all of his followers are defeated in, in November and we're going to work to make that happen and I think uh, at this point we just have to start working and we will figure out where we think we need to go uh, once we get going so that's that will be my summary Mm -hmm. of our group. I hope that's okay for oh, of course. the group. <laughs> Absolutely. And who else was leading a breakout room um, of our Stu? Uh, yeah, I think in my group, uh, there was um, there were some questions. It was a, a question about um, voting by mail and uh, just whatever complications or whatever issues might uh, might become parent when uh and that's whether that should be the uh the crux of our either our phone banking or our letter writing campaigns or in, or in the text of the, letter, of the letter writing and and also um this isn't a question that came up in the phone bank but i'll just use my <laughs> time to ask a question that just uh that i just thought of and i regards florida where i'm going to be writing letters to, tomorrow and since it's uh since florida is such a hot spot should we or are the restrictions that dictate that we shouldn't mention covid in our letters or to people who are participating in phone banks how how much should that be a factor in what how we what we communicate or how we communicate what I can and if I can jump in, one other one other thing that was mentioned was to focus on low frequency voters and new voters. Right. Yes, well, we in, are, in any of the adopted. Yeah, that is that is who we're calling or writing letters to. Absolutely, like the the practice with get out the vote, especially, is you don't reach out to the people you know are going to vote, yeah. and you don't. In the get out the vote window, you don't reach out to the people who like are very, very, very unreliable to vote. You reach out for the people who are inconsistent voters. So they do sometimes show up, but you need to give them a nudge to get them over the line. So that's usually the, the best practice. And it's similar with the letters that we are targeting underrepresented, um, likely Democrats or infrequently voting Democrats as well as underrepresented voters within that group. Um, in terms of vote by mail, which I know has come up a lot, we can't obviously forecast exactly what the future is going to hold, but that's where our phone banking and text banking will be very versatile. When we were 
in a sense, a voter suppression state is a great practice run for what we may be dealing with across the board this year. So when we were doing the primary calling to Texas and Georgia, obviously the poster child of voter suppression, um, we were, it was complicated, but what we were providing was essential. And it was, here's a place to look up your, the place to drop off your mail ballot. Here's, um, here's your polling place if it's gotten to that point, or here's where you can go to early vote. And we really hope that you will because it's gonna be safer. So I can't, tell you exactly what our messages will become, but I can tell you that the campaigns and Reclaim Our Vote are all very dynamic with their scripts for phone banking. Um, in terms of the mail letters, what we have been asked to do by Vote Forward is to stick to a straight forward, get out the vote message. But we are advising people to leave the envelope open and not seal them until we get closer because we don't know what other messages we may need to drop into these. We also are advising people to keep the states separate if you can, so that your Texas is not mixed up with your Florida and your Wisconsin, et cetera, because there may be special messages that are state by state specific. Um, but because voting in person is going to be so critical still, um, we are still going to mail these letters that ask people to vote by mail. If we just don't know how things may adjust. The other reason that we are not sealing envelopes is in Wisconsin, when we were having the first spikes and they had their um, state uh, Supreme Court election, Vote Forward decided we're going to mail all the Wisconsin letters we've got way, way, way ahead of schedule. It's not going to be about November. Now it's for this primary or whatever, this early election. And we put, uh, people put inserts into those about signing up to vote by mail for that election. So that could happen, we just don't know. But getting these things ready, um, getting these things ready to go and assuming that in-person voting will remain um, complicated but essential is, is the best that we can do. Um, was there, were there any other breakout rooms that we didn't hear a report? Yeah, Mary Ellen. Um, sure. Um... There was definitely support for, you know, whatever swing left um, suggests, but there were also strong, passionate support for Arizona mm -hmm. uh, as a great Latinx state. Um, but also having done some research there for, uh, for swing left, 75% of the voters there vote by mail. So we'd have to be... Well, you know, the other thing about Arizona is California has a huge swing left participation and they have got Arizona covered. <laughs> So I love Arizona. We, we did a lot of phone banking for uh, Kirsten Cinema last time around, but I'm, I'm choosing not to wade into AZ for this, this year for that reason. Um, but agreed. And that's one of the reasons that we also have been excited about Florida. And one thing I will tell you about Florida is that it's now a reclaim our vote state as well. So that we have the ability, we have the option to if we decide to go for it with Florida, we have the option to choose a county, again, like we did in North Carolina, where we could sometimes do reclaim our vote dialing, uh, which would especially target Latinx voters, uh, as well as black voters, and then sometimes be uh, doing candidate phone banking. So um, I know that we are at one minute before time. I wanted to just show one last screen, which is our calendar of weekly events. So um, we're going to, you're going to be able to see this on our um, group page at any time. The link is there as well, bit.ly slash SLT 20 swing left target 2020. We do candidate phone banks on Saturday afternoons and we're about to start doing them on Tuesday evenings. We do reclaim our vote, North Carolina phone banks on Sunday afternoons and Wednesday evenings. We do letter parties twice a week, Sunday afternoon or evening and Wednesday evening. And for the next week or two, we're still doing a happy hour speaker series before we start doing a phone bank on Tuesday nights. And um, I'm just going to hit return here on a lot of things for the chat. So it's a link to the agenda that we went over today the slides I presented, and then our weekly schedule of actions, if that's helpful to have. I know that we are at time, but first of all, I want to acknowledge and thank everybody who stayed on for the 90 minutes. 
and say how lucky we are to have you uh, participating with us and how excited we are to, uh, to see your faces again. Thanks for watching our group meeting. I hope you'll complete your personal plan of action at bit.ly slash the number 100 day signups, bit.ly slash 100 day signups, all lowercase. And join some of our phone banks and letter parties soon by visiting bit.ly slash slt20, it's our initials for swing left target 2020. Uh, bit.ly slash lowercase slt20. Then tune in again next week and every week for regular episodes of the Heal Me Too podcast with ideas that may help with the needs of now, whether you're a survivor, an ally, or anyone experiencing stress and trauma in these times. In the meantime, catch up on the episodes and extras from our first and second seasons. Subscribe to our Heal Me Too podcast and festival YouTube channel, as well as Apple Podcasts. If you take just a second to give us a review and a rating on iTunes, you will help more survivors and allies to find us. You can join our mailing list at HealMeTooPodcast.com and follow us on social media. We are at Heal Me Too Fest. Please say hi in the comments. Thank you for listening. Bye.